Welcome back to the series about why there are so many types of audio cables. This episode explains why XLRs exist and why they're your best friend. I'm Audio Zach, and this channel covers audio topics for beginners. The last episode featured RCA cables, which became common in the 1940s. Let's jump ahead to 1950, when Canon Electric, a competitor of RCA, was developing cables with three pins for a balanced signal. This is important because a long enough cable can actually act as an antenna and pick up noise. When a cable is balanced, you split an audio signal in two, invert one of the signals, send them both along separate wires in the cable, and revert the inverted signal back to normal. I'll go into more detail in a future video, but this effectively cancels out the noise from any interference along the length of the cable. A third wire is the ground, and it wraps around the two signal wires to shield them from further interference. Back at Canon Electric, engineers had developed their X-Connector series to send and receive these balanced signals. They added a latch that would hold the cable in place, hence their XL or X-Latch series. They continued improving the design and added a rubber compound to insulate the female connector. That is, series X with a latch and rubber, XLR. Technically, they've since changed the rubber to a polymer, but the XLR name stuck. While originally a 3-pin connector, newer designs can have up to 7 pins. They can also transmit up to 15 amps of electric current for powering condenser microphones or small speakers. XLR connectors are commonly found on microphones, speakers, some electrical applications, and stage lighting control. It also comes in a mini XLR version commonly seen on wireless headsets. The next episode explains how Speak On connectors might just save your life! So don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any videos about audio. 